Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, we are going to enter the world of fast traveling. This is by far the most efficient way to complete missions in Grand Theft Auto Online. And in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing how you can use fast traveling to complete the Kyoprico heist faster than you ever could have imagined before. So let's get straight into it. Let's start off with how the fast travel before we actually get into the heist itself. The first thing you want to do is make your way over to the interaction menu, go to map blip options, go to jobs, and check on every single one of the jobs to show, except for open wheel races. When you do this, if you take a look at the map, you're going to see all over there are a bunch of blue blips everywhere, and these are all different locations that I can teleport to. Now, if you were to start up a mission, for example, if we go on our computer here and we go to gather intel you're going to notice that all of the blips disappear however there is a way to fix this to fix this problem all you have to do is go onto your phone go to quick join go to the bottom where it says random alone and start it then go back to your phone go back to quick join and just leave the app that's all you have to do it's going to stop you searching for a job i'm not really sure why this bugs out your gta to leave the blips on the map but if we now go back to the heist board and we press gather intel, you're going to notice that it is on our map and everything else is there too. So there you go, there's all the jobs. Finally, before we actually perform the job warp, go to online, go to options, and go over to matchmaking. Make sure it is set to closed and not open. This way, when you go into a job, it's not going to ask you if you want to host it or search for a lobby. So now that we've completed all these steps, we're ready to do the job warping. Now, I'm going to be showcasing how to do this on PC, as that's what I'm currently playing on, but I'll have a video linked in the description if you want to do this on consoles. So, what we're going to do is, as you can see right now, we have the Kyoprico Gather Intel mission. And let's say we want to go over to the mission. So, we want to go as close as possible. How about this spot right here? So, we're going to start the job. And then, when I start it, I'm going to spam click on my mouse. I'm going to spam click right mouse button. So, I'm going to start it. And I'm going to spam click right mouse button. So, as I'm spamming this, you're going to see that it's going to say, are you sure you want to leave the job? press enter and now it's going to teleport you to that location it's literally just that simple i know it sounds easy but it really is that easy there you go we are now at this location and as you can see there is our destination with our car parked literally right next to us so it's just that simple now that you know how to fast travel i'm going to be showcasing just how incredibly fast you can complete the Kyoprico heist with this method. It's going to shave off multiple minutes of time, which is a lot when you think about it. So, let's make our way over to the quick join page, random, alone, are you sure? And then go back over to quick join and exit. This is obviously going to make it so we have all the map lips stay on the page while we start our job up. So let's head over to the planning screen and start up and gather intel. It wants us to head over to Grapeseed, which is literally right where we are. So, start job, yes, and I'm going to start spamming on right click after it says are you sure you want to leave we're going to click enter and just like that we're already on our way teleporting over to the Valium now unfortunately we didn't get Lago Zancudo as our spawn location if you're ever trying to do a speed run Lago Zancudo is by far the best location to get but this is fine we are literally right next to the Valium and all we're going to do is kill a couple people really quickly and steal the planes so a boop a boop a boop and there you go just like that all the people are dead so let's run over to the Valium I always go through the back because it's a little troll to go around the wing but either way now that we've done all this we're actually entering the Valium we're at 30 seconds on the clock that's really fast I mean that is incredibly fast now the craziest part about fast traveling is it also teleports your personal vehicle next to you what that means is that if we were to go over to our interaction menu and call out let's say the phantom wedge it's going to spawn the phantom wedge next to us so that's something that I can easily suggest to do when you know the long fin mission which I'll showcase when we start the long fin setup but when doing that you can call in your phantom wedge and literally teleport the phantom and the long fin to your destination so obviously at this point we're gonna fly all the way over to Cayo Perico this is a fairly annoying flight 
Obviously, as I said, Lagos Ancudo is the best location to get, but at least with fast traveling, you're still shaving off probably a good minute of time for you to actually get over to the location. I actually didn't know about fast traveling all up until probably about a month ago. Um, I've never been a super try-hard speedrunner, uh, and if I ever did speedrun, it was usually without glitches, which I kind of consider this to be a glitch. So, I've been getting a little bit more into speedrunning the Kyo Preco Heist, and this is something that you obviously have to understand how to do. Not only do you have to understand how to do uh, fast traveling with the Kayaprico Heist if you ever want to get up to records like Dark Viper, but you also need to understand how to get the Sparrow to spawn at Kayaprico, which is really tricky, and it's like a 1 in 3 or 1 in 4 chance of actually working. So to get a proper speedrun working for the Kayaprico Heist, I would easily say it's going to take you maybe a week, maybe a month to get a good speedrun time. I'm pretty confident that I could get a better time or similar time to Dark Viper if I really, really tried. Um, but as of right now, that's just not too high up on my priority list as I'm pretty busy. Either way, we're at about 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock and we're almost, almost at Gaia Brico. As I said, it's an incredibly long flight time to actually make your way over there. It's a bit unfortunate that you have to fly so far. I always kind of wish that you just like took a plane right off of LSIA, which would make sense. Like, why can't I just look at the schedule and then use my own plane at LSIA? fly over to Cayo Preco. Instead, we have to go from, like, Procopio Beach. Whatever. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I guess we're just gonna fly there anyway. So at this point, I'm gonna tilt my plane a little bit downwards. This is obviously going to increase our speed a bit. You can actually see that on the speedometer. We're going decently fast, but I guess nothing really insane. Either way, we have now arrived at Cayo, and we're at three minutes on the clock. So I don't know if that's exactly fast, but, uh, we're there, so... That's the good thing. Now, I could have had my Sparrow in the background for this and done it previously, but getting the Sparrow, as I said, on Kyoprico is a pain in the butt, and really only true speedrunners are going to do that, so I'm not going to bother with this. I'm just going to showcase the fastest way to make your way across the island. So after this guy searches my parts, and don't, don't touch all my parts, but after he's done searching us, we're going to go hop on the dirt bike, and I'm going to showcase the fastest way to complete... Oh, I didn't realize that we were in first person, but I'm going to showcase the fastest way to complete this part. So, let's head over to the dirt bike, a yeet, and a full speed ahead. So, obviously, you want to get around the cameras. This is really easy. Just go off-road right here. This is really, really fast, and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about crashing or anything like that as long as you stay away from any of the wooden buildings. Every now and then, there's like a little fence post I'll drive into that's protruding out of the ground, but for the most part, you should be completely fine. So, we're going to take the motorcycle and apparently wall run, but that's fine. We're just going to drive right through the gate and go around. All right, not too bad. A roll through here, and okay. So at this point, we are just going to go all the way around this camera, and we're going to wait for that guy to drive a little bit away. And now at this point, we're just going to drive our dirt bike right up this wall, or we're going to crash our bike into the wall. A bit unfortunate, but you don't need that much speed to do it anyway. It'd be nice if my character would get on the bike, though. We should actually be able to complete it just by driving up this, and yeah, there you go. You can see it's pretty easy to do that. Sure, we may have lost like a teeny bit of time, but we're fine as it is. All right, so now at this point, we're just going to drive up this little bit of a cliff over, and we kind of had to wait for that car anyway, so I guess it actually ends up working out in our favor as it is. So we're going to drive straight through, we're going to go this way and get around the camera so it can't see us, and we're going to make our way directly to the communications tower. So this is pretty fast, as you can see. We're at five minutes, and we've already made our way directly over to the comms tower, so this is really, really easy. Signal box is actually at the bottom, which is pretty lucky, I'm not gonna lie. This would have gotten a pretty decent speedrun spawn. So now we gotta do the uh, the big brain math. So let's see what we have to do. 81. So I would guess that the 7 goes to the 10, the 5 goes to here, and the 1 goes to there. Alright, that was pretty fast. And Volt Lab is completed. Now we're gonna go take a look at our target. I'm kinda hoping we get something we need the plasma cutter for. Um, because bearer bombs, they kind of change the way it works, and it's not nearly as efficient as it used to be. So, let's head over to the cameras, Panther, and Courtyard. 
And basement. Okay, here we are at the basement. Sweet! Oh, that's fine with me. As long as, as I said, we have something that I can use the plasma cutter for. So now that we're done with all that, we're just gonna go on to online, find a new session. Make sure that your spawn location is set to the Kosatka. If it isn't, then this part's gonna be really painful for you because you're gonna have to spawn into another new session after that. Once you load into the new session, make sure that you head onto your phone and complete the steps that I showcased before. So quick join, random, alone, are you sure? And then go back to your phone and leave the page. Doing this will obviously leave all the map blips again available when you start up your next source. So we're gonna head over to our planning screen once again, and we're going to start sourcing the long fin this time. So let's go over to prep. Approach vehicles and long fin. It's telling us to go to the Vinewood Police Station, which the closest location appears to be this death match right here. So let's start the job and start spamming right click on the mouse. Now, the first time I did this mission, I didn't realize that when you have cops on you, you cannot see the uh, job warp. So you're gonna have to kill yourself after you have the cops off of you or to lose the cops so you can job warp. And you'll see that in just a moment. So we're gonna go to Phantom Wedge. We're gonna call it in and we're gonna look down. Looking down is going to spawn in the Phantom Wedge as close as possible. So as you can see, it's right in front of us. And now we're gonna drive over to the Vinewood Police Station, which is fairly easy to do. Full speed ahead and roll around the corner. Hello, civilians. How you doing? Didn't mean to murder you there. All right. Now, I usually like to run over the cops that are going to be shooting at my face when I pick up the trailer. So I kind of just like drive into all these guys here just like that. Uh, although I kind of messed up and didn't grab the trailer. So let me let me reverse a little bit better there. There we have it. So now that I have the trailer, all we're going to do is we're going to leave the area just a bit. And I'm going to stop the Phantom, and we're going to kill ourselves. I know this sounds kind of stupid, but this is literally the fastest way to do it. So we're going to run over here, throw the sticky bomb. That's going to kill us. Oh, and we're going to get ran over by a cop car. That's great. But as you're going to notice, now we have no police on us. So we can head back over to the truck cab, and we're going to teleport it over to the location. And just like that, we'll be done. So this should be really, really easy for really any of you. Um, to be fair, if you know where the exact location is, you don't even need to head into the truck because it's going to spawn it to where you're going. But since I'm stupid man and don't know the exact location, I'm going to head into the truck and it's going to show us a blip on the map. So let's go to this location right here should be fine. Yes, start this job. And once again, we're going to start spamming. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, leave the job. Now because the Phantom Wedge counts as our personal vehicle, it's going to spawn it right next to us. And if I'm not mistaken, the trailer should be on the back of it, which we're going to find out in just a moment. So there you have it. The trailer is on the back of the phantom wedge so yeah pretty easy way to kind of cheese this as you can see now as i said unfortunately we got a bit of a poor area to uh, teleport to but that's fine all we're gonna do here is shoot through the fence so we can just run through it that way we don't have to find an exit and we already have the long foot on the back of it it's just so stupid how easy this is so let's just uh, reverse the trailer, I guess, a bit and uh, mess that up. Uh, oopsie doozy. That's fine. We'll just reverse it. We still saved a massive amount of time doing it this way. All right, let's grab that trailer and turn the Phantom Wedge around at least as much as we can. Okay, there you go. All good. Okay, let's crash right through this fence here. And just like that. We are now completed with this mission. I mean, that's so simple. Obviously, again, I'm kind of messing up here and there when it comes to completing these, but it only took me three minutes to do that mission. That is so dang fast. At this point, all we're going to do is, again, find a new session, invite only, and now we're going to go back into our Kosatka, and it's going to spawn us right into the city again. Again, before you forget, make sure to go to quick join, random, yep, start up a job, but then go to quick join and leave. Just make sure you do that, because if you forget, it's going to be rather painful. So now we're going to grab the plasma cutter. That should be pretty easy. So preps, equipment, and plasma cutter. we got to go to the safe house, which it looks like the closest area is this one right here. So starting the job. All right. Well, hopefully we don't have to listen to eight years of Pavel dialogue. I kind of wish you didn't have to, because usually uh, completing this part of the mission is really easy. Just take a picture of the planning board, which you're going to see, but then you have to deal with Pavel speaking to you for like literally eight years. So we don't actually have our own personal vehicle out right now. We're going to call him the Speedo Custom. This is a great vehicle for completing this mission. So there's our Speedo Custom. Let's go hop in that. Now, the reason the Speedo Custom is so good is when you are grabbing the... Uh, 
the plasma cutter because you can just mow everybody down with the machine gun and then leave. So that's what I like to use the Speedo Custom for. Uh, and it's also really quick to uh, find in your spawn menu, so that's exactly why I like it. All right, so let's head right over here, get out of our Speedo Custom and into the safe house. Let's see where the picture has to be taken. Not on that wall, all right. Let's take a picture right here. Boop, and a boop. All right, just like that, we send to Pavel and we go back and leave. All right, that was pretty easy. Unfortunately, we are again are probably gonna have to wait for Pavel to speak to us for the next year. All right, there you go. He is giving us the coordinates. Okay, let's see where we have to go all the way over here. All right, start this job. This is actually a pretty good spawn location one. Uh, it's right in the open, so it should be pretty easy to just slip in there with the Speedo Custom and grab our material. Now, something I should point out is that you cannot fast travel with something in your inventory, or at least I learned that the hard way. I could be wrong, and somebody can correct me in the comments, but to what I've learned, you cannot fast travel with something in your inventory it's not going to count that you have it. It only lets you transport personal vehicles and things like that. So a bit weird, but just something I thought I would point out. So let's make our way through here and let's just blow all this stuff up. Let's blow up that. There you go. And now we're just going to drive right in here. Grab that. All right. So now that we have done that, we're going to go not to vehicles, but services, Kosatka, and call in our Sparrow. The Sparrow is obviously like the best thing ever for completing missions because you can just instantly get in your Sparrow and leave. Don't run me over. Okay, we're all good. We're going to go into our interaction menu, snacks, and we're going to eat some snacks so that we don't die. So let's just get into the sky and all right, that was pretty easy as you can see. So now we're just going to fly back to our Kosatka. Now to be fair, you can use the Oppressor Mark II for this and it's probably going to be faster. We're going to go to services, Kosatka, and request our Kosatka. Instead of having to fly all the way over to the city, all the way at the back of the Merryweather docks where it most likely is, you can see now we're just going to head right over to off of Del Perro and, uh, and it's right here, so it's just that simple. With the Sparrow as well, you can just teleport right into the back of the sub, which is something that I find really nice. So there's our Kosatka, and let's just spam the enter button. Ah, it didn't let me enter. Well, that's unfortunate. I guess I, uh, I don't know. I guess I just missed the entrance a little bit, but that's fine. We should be able to enter it this time. There you go. All right. So pretty simple stuff so far. It took us probably about three-ish, four minutes to complete that mission. I guarantee normally the time to get there would have been at least a minute and a half to two minutes. So again, just way, way faster. Heist prep complete. So that's the first one out of the four. The others are also really, really easy to be fair, and we're going to be using our Sparrow for the majority of them. So we're going to make our way all the way over to the front room. But before we start, make sure again to go onto your phone, quick join, random, blah, 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 yep, and okay, we're all set up. Okay, that's good. So we're going to enter the planning screen, and what prep do we want to do next? How about we do the fingerprint cloner? We got to go to the warehouse, and this looks like a pretty close spawn location, so let's do that one. That'll be a very, very quick teleport. I don't know if I have any personal vehicles out right now, so... I guess we'll find out, uh, because I use the Speedo Custom, but I'm not sure if it's still there. I guess we're gonna, I guess we're gonna see. Is it here? No, unfortunately it's not. But I guess we don't even really need it, because the warehouse is right here as it is. Uh, so let's just head through this gate, and, uh... There you go. Okay, nice. I don't really care if the guards see me. I'm just gonna hopefully kill them all in the next, like, second. So, bonk, bonk. Oh my, that guy almost just blasted my face off. But the explosive shotgun usually gets the job done. Now we just gotta wait for Pavel to tell us stuff we already know. I guess I can purchase some ammo while we wait. Ammo. All. Oh, I'm actually surprised I only have to spend $15,000 on ammo. You know something I didn't know is that you can actually uh, get firework rounds now? Like, I didn't know that previously. Like, for example, if we shoot the firework in here, you go back to inventory, ammo, and you go to purchase all, you can actually, like, get your firework ammo fully restocked. Back in the day, you could only have, like, a certain amount of firework ammo, 20, and then once the 4th of July ended, you couldn't actually replenish it. So that's something I learned. Uh, but it's kind of cool that you can buy firework launcher ammo now, because I can just launch fireworks at everybody I know. So that's something that's pretty cool. Still waiting for Pavel to let us enter the computer. The unfortunate part is it doesn't matter how fast you complete some of these missions if you gotta wait anyway. So, Panther. Boop, boop. Oh, I could have gotten the H, but not too bad. Boom and boom. 
All right, just like that, we've been able to complete this part, and we're going to have to leave. Uh, we're probably going to have to fast travel to the next location, but again, should be pretty simple. So let's see. I've located the archive, which is right over here. Um, I'm going to fast travel to this location, because I know we're going to have to jump down there, and I feel like staying up top is going to be a lot smarter than staying down low. So let's leave that job. Um, maybe I'll fly my sparrow down there. That might take a lot of time, though, to be real. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe I can just steal a streetcar. That actually might be the, uh, the best decision here. Because we have to go all the way down. Let's just steal this car. This should definitely get us there in a pretty timely manner. Thank you very much for your car, good sir. And just like that, we're gonna roll around here. We have to jump down to the archive, which is below us, so we're just going to roll around this corner fairly quickly. A bonk, and let's just go down here. Okay. Oh, this car is a piece of crap. I probably should have had my personal vehicle called in, but it's fine. We just have to jump up this, and we are at the archive. All right. Uh, these cameras I usually do destroy just because they actually can get in my way, so let's destroy that camera and that camera. There you go. And let's enter the archive. Hopefully the sparrow spawns near us, because if it doesn't, this is going to be a big pain in my booty hole. But we got to head all the way over to get the fingerprint cloner. Boop, 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 boo. It should be on the table right over here. Nope. Oh, there it is. All right. It's always at that back room, like every single time. I think it would have been funnier if Rockstar had put it at a random table and you'd have to search like every single area for it. But uh, either way, we've got the fingerprint cloner and now we're going to exit the archive. Obviously, none of the bad guys know we're here. So I, I guess actually we're the bad guy. So, <laughs> but either way, let's go request our sparrow, which has spawned. I'm not even sure where it spawned. Oh, that's a weird, weird location. I mean, I'm not going to complain. We still have it to our access, so yeah, but just the weirdest location I've ever seen my Sparrow spawn. Alright, so we gotta go all the way back over to the Kosatka again. Unfortunately, you're not able to fast travel when it comes to carrying items. I'm not really sure why that is the case, but it is. So we're gonna head all the way back to our Kosatka, but this is a pretty quick flight. The Sparrow is one of the fastest flying vehicles in the game, and in fact, it's, I think, 166 miles per hour. Still, like, the fastest helicopter, maybe apart from the... I would probably say that the weaponized Kanata, when it comes out, is going to be faster. But for now, the Sparrow is the fastest flying helicopter in the game. Oof, that was really sketchy. I thought we were legitimately going to crash into the top of that bridge. What the heck? Uh-oh, I think my Wi-Fi might be dying, guys. Well, there's cars on the road, but that does not look right. Let's hope that my Kosatka lets me enter it, because... My GTA is hella bugged. I'm gonna say that right now. Uh, as long as the fast traveling works, I'm not gonna complain. So let's head over to our Kosatka and... Alright, it lets me enter. I don't know what the heck was going on with my uh, my textures there, but wow, were they messed up. Uh, let me make sure... Yeah, my Wi-Fi appears to be working, so... I guess we're fine, maybe? Um, if we're not fine, I'm gonna have to resume this at a later date. But right now... We're hopefully loading inside of our Kosatka. Hopefully. It's, uh, it's been quite a long loading time now. If we don't load in the next, uh, I'd say, mm, yeah, I'm gonna say our game crashed or something like that. Unfortunately, I was correct. It seems like Streamlabs, every time I load it up, is crashing my Grand Theft Auto Online. I'm not sure if Rockstar is detecting it as a cheating software or something, uh, but essentially my recording software causes my GTA to crash. So I used uh, NVIDIA's video capture software to record, and that is what I'm using now. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate. All of the gameplay you're seeing now, I recorded with that, and now I'm using Streamlabs for the webcam. So, with that aside, as you can see, once again, I'm fast traveling to another location, this time to grab the Cutting Torch. It literally spawned us right outside of the construction site, which is honestly just amazing. This has saved me so much time, it's actually crazy just how good this is. And I didn't even have the prompt for, like, you have to wait 10 seconds seconds for it to tell me to put on the hat so just instantly like that we've got our hat on and we gotta find which of the toolboxes has the cutting torch not that one okay keep on going not that one 
Oh boy, is it gonna be one of these days where we look in every single one that's the last one? No, okay, well, I'll take it. I'll take a little bit of good luck. Normally, it's literally the last box I always look in, but that's all good. Now I'm just gonna slide right off the side of the building, go to services, and call out my Sparrow. Now, the good news is that you can actually spawn in your Kosatka wherever you are, uh, to the closest location you're at, even during missions. This is really nice. Because of the fact that I had to load into a new session after being screwed by my game crashing so many times, my Kosatka was all the way down to, like, Grapeseed, but as you can see, I requested it, and boom, it spawns in right over at the beach. So, that's actually quite nice. So, we're just going to fly our Kosatka with the cutting torch over there. It's kind of weird how you can fast travel and it will, you know, teleport your car next to you, even with the long fin on the back of it. Yet, when you try fast traveling, it doesn't save that you have the cutting torch on you. I always found that to be a little bit weird. But, either way, here we go, and entering our Kosatka. So that was pretty fast. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that is to grab our weapons. I was really, really hoping that we didn't get the Merryweather weapon source, because if you do, then you gotta load into a new lobby, and it's just a bit painful. Thankfully, on my first try, we didn't get the Merryweather. Again, you'll notice I did the quick job thing just to make sure that it would let me fast travel to the next job that we needed to. So we're gonna go over to Prep's Weapon Loadout. I kinda like Crack Shot, although it really doesn't matter. The way that I'm gonna complete the heist is like a five minute path and it really doesn't make a difference. I'm not even gonna bother grabbing secondary targets. So as you can see, we are once again fast traveling. We're going to leave the job and it's going to spawn us directly outside of the building. Now. Now that I think about it, it actually might be possible to fast travel with the weapons and the cutting torch, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, and let me know in the comments, try it yourself, uh, it might actually save you even more time. Uh, but the only reason I, I haven't tried it yet is because I only did it with the plasma cutter, and that one, it did not let me fast travel with it in my inventory. But it's possible that it does, and maybe I messed something up, so let me know. Either way, we're gonna go up to the top of the office with my Sparrow, because it's still the fastest to leave through the roof and go over towards your Kosatka. So we're gonna enter right through the roof. Weirdly enough, the AI got aggroed at me, which doesn't really make sense. Imagine in real life that you just see a helicopter taking off and you instantly start shooting at it for no reason. A uh, little odd, but either way, we're going to use our explosive shotgun, kill everybody in front of us, then we're going to pick this guy off in the head. Nobody's over here, so we're going to eat some snacks, and you're dead, you're dead, and just like that, everybody's dead. Yay! So, the gun locker is locked, but that makes sense because we're just going to pull out the firework launcher. I actually really like the firework launcher because it causes a fire in the building and it spreads throughout basically the entire floor. It's perfect because all the guards just die. You can see that one in the back just burnt to death. It's honestly really funny and it's pretty effective. So I usually just like to light the guards on fire. So we gotta look for 0184. Thankfully, one was the easiest number to find and there was literally only one of them. So I found that fairly fast. Now we're just gonna make our way over to the gun locker, grab the weapons and make our way back to the Kosat. This was incredibly fast. I mean, you can see just how quick we were able to complete this mission. So we have the weapons. Let's exit through the roof. I always forget which one is the roof exit and which one isn't. It's uh, left on the D-pad. So I always forget that one. But after going to the roof exit, we are going to take our Sparrow out and fly back to the Kosatka. So, once again, pretty dang easy. All of these have been easy. The only real painful part was me having to restart my GTA due to it crashing, but apart from that, it's only been about 28 minutes on the clock, and we're basically done with everything. At this point, all we have to do is finish up the heist. And I guarantee there are ways you can complete this even faster. As I said, I'm not even really trying to speedrun this. There are definitely faster ways to do this out there. So, you could very easily complete this heist under, I would be willing to say, maybe 25 minutes if you did it correctly using fast travels. But at this point, all we're gonna do, fly back to our Kosatka, which we can see simmering in the water. Although I guess it's really not simmering because, well, actually it might be. The Gulf of Mexico is like 100 degrees. It's the hottest it's ever been recorded. So uh, my sub is probably <laughs> simmering, but Bell's getting turned into a hot tamale down there. 
At this point, we're done with all of the setups, everything, and we're ready to start up the heist. That shows you just how easy it is to do the fast traveling method here, and it really does save you a crazy amount of time. So here we are over to the planning board and let's start her up. Now I'm gonna say now I don't go for any secondary targets. I could have and I have showcased had to do that in a previous video and still complete the heist very fast. It's just that I, I figured that it would be a lot easier and simpler to finish up the video by just finishing quickly and grabbing the main target. So we're gonna go through the drainage tunnel. We're gonna take the long fit over there. Pretty simple stuff. Um, there's usually not too much special about that. If you do want to grab secondary targets, my general advice is to go all the way over to the airstrip and grab targets there. Mainly because of the fact that every now and then, guards will find dead bodies at main dock or north dock, and it's really sus. The method I used to do before Rockstar changed how guards see dead bodies is I would rob the main compound and then on my way out go down to main dock, take all the secondary stuff there, fill my bag, and then leave. Unfortunately, now that El Rubio's helicopter can see dead guards and apparently know instantly where I am, when you kill guards that you have to get through the gate to leave the compound to grab the secondary targets that way, uh, El Rubio's helicopter sees them and then when you're trying to grab your secondary targets you literally get murdered. So really unfortunate, there's nothing you can actually do about it, uh, so I don't actually do that method anymore. The safest method is literally to go to the airstrip, grab all of your secondary targets first, and then make your way all the way back over to El Rubio's compound. That's the safest way to do it without actually having to worry about anything. So here we are swimming into the grate. Obviously, cutting through this is easy as cake, although I kind of messed it up a bit. I'm not gonna lie. I missed a couple uh, a couple nodes here and there, but at the end of the day, it's uh, it's pretty easy to cut through the, the drainage port. Honestly, the saddest thing is that it takes me longer at this point to complete some of the missions setting up the Kaio Preco Heist than it actually does to complete the Kaio Preco Heist. I mean, heck, there are missions that are much harder than completing the Kaio Preco Heist. It's a bit sad, I do kind of wish Rockstar made the heist a bit harder and had a bit more depth to it, uh, but that's just kind of one of the unfortunate things about the Kaio Perico heist. So, either way, we've now cut through the drainage port and we are going to swim into the main compound. And uh, the pathing I'm going to take is really simple. I've shown this probably in four or maybe five videos now, talking about the heist and different shortcuts and paths to take. Uh, there's a lot of pathing I've learned throughout the previous patches, but this is just the best. I, I don't even know how I figured it out. I guess I just kind of winged it once and I realized, wow, this pathing is literally good. So you're gonna see how it works. It's very simple. You're just gonna hug the wall right when we spawn in So let's wait until the camera actually goes on to us and all right So you're gonna see we're gonna take a left here and we're gonna hug this fence So we're gonna walk right next to it walk right next to it And now we're gonna take another left and we're gonna take a sharp right jump over the railing here and then keep on going. Now we're gonna wait for this guard to turn away from us. As you can see, he walks into his home over there. Goodbye. We're gonna run past this guard here. We don't need to kill him or the juggernaut can see his dead body. We're gonna run up the stairs and this here is the only guard you can kill without getting spotted. So, bop this guy on the face. Don't ever shoot because if you shoot, sometimes guard will hear you uh, below. At this point, let's do the fingerprint cloner, and we're basically done with the heist. We're just gonna grab the Sinsumito tequila and get out. I've always found it weird that there's nothing you really have to avoid inside of the underground vault. You'd think that'd be like the most armored and protected area, but no, there's literally no guards that are looking at the Sinsumito. Like, what? I always found that so weird. Like, Pavel creates this massive persona and picture of El Rubio being this ruthless drug lord who catches somebody down if they have a single trace of weapons. And yet we're over here just literally chilling, running through his compound over and over and over every single day, stealing the same things. Uh, like, I don't even get it. Like, I, and you know what the funniest part I've always imagined is that we keep stealing the same things, right? We keep stealing the Sinsumito tequila, the pink diamonds, the panther statue. Like, we keep stealing the same things over and over. So I've always wondered if El Rubio is just buying the items we've stolen <laughs> and then and then putting them back in a safe and then buying the things we've stolen again just keeps putting them back there. Maybe he enjoys being robbed. Maybe that's the secret. 
Maybe he thinks it's fun to, like, have his guards murdered. I don't know. Nor do I really care, because at this point, we are escaping the compound. You'll notice that I always wait here for a second, just to wait for that one guard to walk past me, and then we're going to slip past him. That way, we don't get detected running through. If you run right through, he's going to spot you. Doesn't matter if you get spotted at all running to this gate, though. You can just run right past them, even if they shoot at you. It doesn't matter. So, uh, at this point, we've completed the Kaiaprika heist. We're going to steal a motorcycle, jump off into the water, and we're done. It took me, in total, about 30 minutes to do this from start to finish, which is really, really fast, especially when you realize that this was not an incredibly fast run. As I said before, I very easily could have completed this faster if I had tryharded, but I didn't really put that much effort in it. It shows you just how easy you can complete the Kaioprico heist at this point in Grand Theft Auto Online. So, at the end of the day, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. And uh, let me know if this helped you, uh, especially because this is something that I think a lot of people overlook and think is something that's challenging and only meant for speedrunners. But, now nah, this is just a really good method in general. Fast traveling is just a massive way to save money and save time. So, hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.